Hello and welcome to today's presentation of LifeRay 6.2 New Features and the Demo. My name is Ray Cameron. I'm part of the Extivia team. If you're new to Extivia, we offer a variety of enterprise technology solutions and services, including business intelligence and data warehousing, data management, application development, and portal development. And we proudly received the North American LifeRay Partner of the Year Award in 2012. You can learn more about Extivia on our website at extivia.com. And today's format for the webinar is uh, going to be mainly presentation up, uh, for about the first 50 minutes, uh, including a demo. And then we're going to try and save a few minutes towards the end. But we do have a lot of, of material to cover. Uh, I'm sure a lot of material you're, ex material you're excited to see. Uh, you can submit questions at any time during the webinar using the GoToWebinar control panel. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Vivek Agarwal, the Vice President of Portal, De Portal and Enterprise Software Solutions from Extivia. And he'll be introducing our, um, our presenter today. Uh, Vivek, it looks like you may be on mute, but are you there? Thanks, Ray. As You're some welcome, of you Vivek. may know, as some of you may know, Extivia has been providing a full suite of enterprise portal content management and social collaboration solutions to our customers since the late 1990s, and have seen this product space mature and evolve over the years. We started monitoring LifeRay almost a decade back and first played with LifeRay when it was still in version 3.6, and have seen it grow in leaps and bounds since then. Our first LifeRay project implementation was with version 4.2 back in 2006, but it was only with version 5.2 and the Enterprise Edition that we fully embraced LifeRay as our preferred portal platform. 6.0 was released in the second half of 2010 and brought some core platform and usability enhancements, including global content, auditing, and integrated workflow. LifeRay 6.1 was released in the first quarter of last year and built on the platform capabilities of 6.0 by adding significant enhancements for end users. This release elevated LifeRay's web content management capabilities, added new features for document management, introduced dynamic data lists and faceted search, and enhanced staging, publishing, and site management all with a strong focus on improving the out-of-the-box user experience. And now we are on the verge of seeing LifeRay 6.2 later this year. We are super excited about some of the new capabilities that are coming with this version and figured that there was nobody better to talk about them than Ed Chung, LifeRay's VP of Product Management. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Ed to introduce us to the new features that are coming. Ed, you want to take it on? Thanks, Vivek. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, as part of this webinar uh, sponsored by uh, Xtivia to go over the new features that we're looking forward to in LifeRay 6.2. Um, uh, just to start with, uh, what I want to cover today is an overview of the planned features and improvements to uh, LifeRay Portal. Uh, I will cover some social office as well as sync uh, features as well. Um, and of course, I've, I've got to start with disclaimer that uh, this information that we're providing, for the most part, um, everything I'll talk about will be included in 6.2. But uh, for, for purchasing purposes, uh, we recommend that you look at the current version that we have and make your purchasing decision based upon the release that we actually have, not any promises that we're making for this future version that we're working on. Um, so when actually looking at the release schedule, uh, we're looking to release LifeRay 6.2, the Community Edition version, in Q3 of 2013. The EE version, I believe, uh, at this point, is going to be available in early Q4 of 2013. Now, everything that I want to go over today is not an exhaustive list of the features planned for 6.2, but it is a high-level overview of, of some of the more important features that we just want to highlight for you during this webinar. And for the last 10 minutes, what we want to do is 
give you a hands-on feel for some of the improvements that, that we've made, particularly around um, uh, the web management part of it. And uh, you know, that should be fun uh, to actually see some of the improvements that we've made with the product. Um, so just moving on. Um, OK, so what is LifeRay currently working on? Um, as you know, LifeRay is an open source, uh, enterprise open source company. And we are very in tune with, with uh, and proud of our community and the greater ecosystem that we have with, with our partners like Extivia. And one of the things we like to do is have a very open and transparent development process. So if you go to uh, issues.liferay.com, uh, the link there sends you to a rapid board where you can clearly see all the work that we're currently working on for this next version. So you can go there and check all the stories that, that we're working on and, and the progress we've made on them um, as we march toward uh, releasing 6.2 later this year. Okay. Uh, just to start with, uh, at a very high level overview, what are some of the, the goals that we had for, for our product uh, as it related to 6.2? And with 6.2, one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was uh, being able to identify um, real user problems and being able to, to solve them in a way that, uh, you know, really enhanced the user experience. And to do that, you know, we rely on, uh, you know, our, the feedback that we get from our community, from our customers. Um, and, and, and with that, uh, what, we've, what we've done with 6.2 is decided to uh, focus on some uh, themes for 6.2. Specifically, uh, the themes that I'd like to cover today are LifeRay for mobile delivery, uh, LifeRay for application delivery, uh, LifeRay for social collaboration, and LifeRay for web uh, experience management. And the reason the web experience management portion is highlighted there is, is at the end of this high-level overview and the slide deck that I'm going through, I would like to spend some time just going through a very simple use case of how we've improved the web experience management for LifeRay in terms of uh, being able to easily add content um, and be able to publish it onto a page. Okay. So moving on to uh, LifeRay uh, as a mobile delivery platform. Uh, so some of the things that we uh, focused on for 6.2 uh, was on the mobile website. Um, and what we, what we really focused on was trying to make everything responsive in LifeRay out of the box. And that basically what that means is we are with LifeRay 6.2, um, basically uh, basing LifeRay 6.2 off of Alloy uh, UI 2.0. And with Alloy UI 2.0, that's actually building off of Bootstrap, and, and we're leveraging their responsive CSS that you'll be able to use when you build your custom themes for LifeRay as well. Um, so the other thing we've done is converted all our default layout templates that are included with the product, um, as well as the layouts that we use inside Portlets to being responsive. Um, and uh, on the device detection side, what we've done there is, uh, you know, you, you now have the ability to create what we call subsites, um, where you can, using device detection, uh, detect what device people are coming from and potentially direct them to a different subsite. The other thing you can do uh, with device detection is change the layout, look and feel. And what we're uh, you know, heading toward here is for those that are invested in basically the whole concept of being able to deliver a different mobile experience um, based on the device, more actions that you can do out of the box. Uh, the other thing that we've done is added a device preview um, and there's a small little screenshot of a prototype on the right there where you can actually see uh, the LifeRay site content based on different devices. On the native app side, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with some of the native apps that we've built for LifeRay Sync uh, mobile and, desk, and, and I'll get to desktop next, but on the mobile side uh, we have a, a mobile app that allows you to have content access to your document repository in LifeRay. And uh, we are looking to enhance some of the native app capabilities by adding things like notifications, activities, and doing some basic portal and content management uh, from the native device as well. We've targeted this for iOS and Android, 
And uh, one thing I do want to mention is that for native apps, uh, the release cycle isn't necessarily tied to our 6.2 release cycle. And um, with, with at least the native mobile apps, we have the ability to uh, be able to iterate and deliver more features uh, more rapidly. And, and we're certainly taking advantage of that. And, and um, some of the features, particularly the ones in italics, uh, won't necessarily be available with the 6.2 launch, but they will be available at some point uh, during the 6.2 lifecycle. On the Sync desktop side, uh, with the desktop app, uh, what we're uh, thinking of building out with 6.2 is, uh, as part of 6.2, is the ability to check out and check in documents through the desktop. Um, we've also seen a lot of requests and demand from both the community and customers for uh, multi-tenancy. Um, we're finding situations where uh, a lot of our customers have more than one life range installation and they would like their desktop app to be able to uh, basically uh, support a multi-tenant situation where they can sync their docs across different life range installations. And the other concern here is around client and, and server file quotas so that both the user can be able to set quotas on how many docs get synced on, on their uh, device as well as the administrator being able to uh, set some amount of quotas on the server side as well. On the um, application platform side, uh, we focused on this concept of portal resiliency. And this was really important for us, uh, considering the advent of, of the marketplace and how much we've invested in, in the life rate marketplace. Uh, one common concern um, that we've heard from some of our customers and communities is, uh, you know, I know you guys have a marketplace and you're trying to promote all these third-party apps. Uh, how can I be sure that these third-party apps are going to be safe to run within my, um, with, within my portal environment, is there any way I can test things out first prior to being able to deploy them into production? So one concept that, uh, you know, that, that has been around uh, from a portal perspective is, is just the whole idea of WSRP, and that's basically the de facto standard for portal reuse and isolation. Um, but the limitations with WSRP have always been that, it, you know, we've heard it's difficult to implement, scale, and manage. Um, there, are, there have been authentication issues, performance concerns. And so what we wanted to do to sort of support a, a much more robust experience, particularly with marketplace apps, is provide um, the ability to isolate portlets on separate portal JVMs. And basically what that allows you to do is it allows you to sandbox portlets so that they can run in a different portal JVM uh, apart from your portal JVM so that uh, if there are any misbehaving portlets that they won't bring your portal server down. And we're planning on allowing that uh, portlet isolation to be controlled uh, through the control panel. Another uh, offering that we're looking to uh, provide um, around the 6.2 timeline is the whole concept of life rate cloud services. And what we mean by this is these are cloud services that will be available for your on-premise installations of, of life rate, and they'll be available for both the CEM and EE versions. And some of the things that we're looking to provide as part of this are easier ways that you can actually administer your LifeRay portal installations. Um, and as far as that comes to fixed packs management, understanding which fixed packs you have installed, uh, which fixed packs are still available that you can install, um, and a security analyzer. If there are any critical security issues that are uh, available to you that aren't patched on your installation, uh, that you can be notified immediately of that. Uh, we're going to provide some amount of license management so you can see uh, when your licenses will expire, um, how many licenses you have, and, and how they, that pertains to, to, to your servers. Um, and so we're, we're thinking about how we can provide much more value for your existing life rate on-premise installations through cloud services. Um, and in, in the future, we're also thinking about adding new capabilities to the product through cloud services as well. And you know, some of the things that we're thinking about is enterprise search, social analytics, uh, business intelligence reports, big data management. But those are the things that we're thinking about in terms of what will, what, how can we enhance the entire uh, investment that people have made in the library ecosystem. We're providing these easy cloud services that 
enhance the investment they've already made. Um, another uh, missing piece that we've always had with LifeRay was around um, the ability to do content targeting, specifically for anonymous users. Uh, so that the use case I'm talking about is you have your website, you have an understanding of the different groups and types of people that come to your website. Is there a way that you can target content to those specific uh, user segments that you've identified? And uh, you know this is something that we want to provide as a plugin for 6.2, so it won't release with the 6.2 uh, in Q3, but we're li we're looking at this point to release them as plugins that'll be available for uh, 6.2 later in either Q4 or Q1 of the coming year. On the staging and publishing side, uh, we uh, enhance the whole experience for uh, staging and publishing. Uh, what what we wanted to do was really simplify a lot of the configurations that you that, that we offered uh, you know as flexible as it was it made it a hindrance in terms of really being able to easily figure out what was going on and use it so so we're going to simplify that uh, we wanted to provide more status of what was happening during the publishing process so uh, with previous versions of life Ray, you started a publishing process and there was really no way of telling whether or not that publishing process failed or when it actually completed. And what we're doing with 6.2 is being able to provide you where you are in that publishing process and, and immediately tell you if at any point that publishing process failed and, and what the reasons were for that failure. And um, so right after the export and import of, of, these, uh, of, of the staged content, we want to tell you as much information um, that we can to really make the, the um, the experience much more usable. Uh, on the site management side, uh, we are really excited about some of the improvements we've made here. Um, we have added the whole concept of site hierarchies, and this is the ability to be able to create subsites or child sites um, and be able to have uh, establish some sort of relationship uh, between uh, the user the users of both those sites, so membership policies, as well as content sharing about what content can be shared across those sites. Uh, we've always had the concept of a global site, which was a global repository for that all, all sites could share against. But this is more uh, around the use case for two related sites that want to share some content and being able to um, identify the use cases for how the membership across those two sites are, um, are basically set and, and how that content is shared. Uh, the other thing that we've added around sites are the ability to easily create some default user associations, whether they be roles or teams. And we've also uh, added the ability to add custom fields for sites uh, as well as roles. On the user experience side, um, we uh, actually introduced the recycle bin um, one, this has been a, a really a common request that we've gotten for quite a while, and that's the ability to easily uh, recover any deleted assets, whether they're documents, web contents, blogs, message boards, wikis. Um, now we have a recycle bin that you can configure in which uh, deleted content can go into the recycle bin. You can set how long uh, items are stored in the recycle bin before they're automatically deleted. And uh, the recycle bin is staging and publishing aware. So one common use case that we've seen for people who needed a customized life rate was they actually needed to change the look and feel for a lot of the portlets that we offer out of the box, whether they were blogs, wikis, asset publishers, uh, simply because uh, you know when you're creating a site in life rate, you want the entire branded experience for it to look like the theme that you've created. And uh, for any of the applications that we provided in, in LifeRay, uh, the only way you could change the uh, look and feel was to actually overwrite uh, the portlet itself. So one thing that we've added is this whole concept of application display templates. And what this allows you to do is for blogs, we the asset publishers, for the media gallery, for some application portlets that we've uh, provided this capability of, 
uh, we allow you to designate uh, a different display template so that you can control the look and feel of that application as it renders on your site. Uh, on the web content management side, um, uh, we've done a lot of improvements to make the management of content much easier. So on the add content side, um, you know, if you're familiar with LifeRay, the, the way you had to add content was you actually had to add first to the page the, I'd say, the web content display or some type of display portlet. And then you'd have to configure that display portlet to add the content that you actually wanted to display there. Uh, we're trying to make that experience much easier by allowing you to directly see the content and directly add that content to a page without having to do all that extra configuration. Um, you can easily search and browse for content and apps through the new UI. And uh, the adding of content works with all different types of data types, lists, polls, web content, documents, etc. cetera. Uh, on the website management side, we also added the ability to store your web content into folders. Uh, it's a very similar UI to the documents and media that we improved with 6.1. And it's just easy organization of web content through folders. Uh, on the web content structure editor side, what we've done here is uh, we've used what we already built out for the dynamic data list uh, and being able to easily add uh, uh, fields and, and change settings for those fields uh, to the web content structure. And now you can drop and drag fields that you want to define within, within uh, web content structures. And it's, it's much easier to use uh, versus uh, 6.1. Um, we also support web app URLs in, in case you want to use any of your desktop apps for template editing as well. Another huge improvement that I think we've made to Liferay 6.2 is this uh, template editing. Um, in the past, if, if you've ever, ever had to create any free marker or velocity templates for Liferay's uh, web content management, uh, it was pretty challenging to do. You weren't always aware of what variables were, were available to you. Uh, it wasn't easy to see the fields that were available to you from your structure. Um, and it was uh, quite a challenge to have to either work through the documentation to figure this out or, or figure out, a, you know, look at another example and then figure out how that worked. What, what we've in, uh, improved with, with uh, 6.2 is this whole concept of, of autocomplete hints for fields and variables so that once you start typing in a variable, it will give you all the available fields and variables that you can add. Um, and we've also added to the left of it a little code palette that provides most of the popular variables that you might want to use for a given template and add, add them to the left where you can easily add them. And this is something that I'll be able to demo um, as part of uh, the whole web management part of it. Uh, I do want to mention before I jump into the uh, demo that we also on the collaboration platform side uh, added a new calendar. Um, and what the new calendar supports here is uh, the ability for uh, a user or a site to have multiple calendars. And uh, also, we support resource management as well. So resources such as projectors, conference rooms, phones, um, those types of objects can have their own uh, calendar as well. And people can book uh, those resources as part of, of, uh, of an event to be able to book the availability of that, of that resource. Okay. Uh, Ed, great job moving through the uh, initial presentation. I know we were concerned uh, that uh, that may, may take a little longer time, but we're, we've got uh, a, a good amount of time left to move into the demo. Um, I'm wondering if you'd be able to take one question that came up um, when you were talking about the apps. Are, are the native apps open source? The native apps, uh, no, they are not open source. That, that, uh, that was the only question that's come up so far. Um, just want to let the audience know as we continue through the demo, 
Um, we should have some time at the end to take some questions. So any questions that come up um, as you're viewing this, please feel free to submit those and we'll work through those uh, as we wrap up the webinar today. Okay, great. Uh, one thing I, I, I do want to uh, mention before I leave the slide deck here, Ray, is uh, just uh, the whole concept of, you know, I, I know that right now we're, we're taking questions and we can take questions and, and we can be able to answer any questions you have, but uh, one area that we've just added in, for the community is this whole concept of community feature ideas, and it's a way that LifeRay can be able to be better in tune with the features that are relevant to you uh, as a community member or as a customer. And if you go to uh, liferay.com slash community slash ideas, you'll see this page where you can add your latest feature idea. You can look at the list of feature ideas that other people have submitted. You can vote on them. And what we're doing as part of project, product management is we're reviewing these on a monthly basis, uh, seeing what ideas are, are coming out, um, seeing what, what there's a high demand for, and using that to help drive uh, some of the solutions that we're targeting to solve for, for the next release of library. Okay. Uh, okay, so great. Um, what I want to do now is go ahead and uh, run you through a quick demo of some of the web management features that we've added to LifeRay. Uh, in our North American Symposium last year, uh, I did a session where I showed off uh, our new calendar, uh, the application display templates, the web content folders, and, and uh, some of the other features that we had developed at the time. And what I thought would be good for this webinar is to uh, show you a use case of how we've really tackled some of the web management issues of LifeRay, of being able to really easily add content and being able to manage it and, and add it to your site. So the use case I thought that might be interesting for us to consider is just to create a very simple bio page um, that a lot of sites have um, and uh, be able to you know, create a bio page that has a name, a title, an image of a person, and a brief bio description. And, and I'll walk you through um, how you can do that with 6.2 now. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go to, as you can, if you're familiar with 6.1, you'll notice that we've made some, some changes to the way that you can actually administer your site and, and the way the doc bar works up top. But once I go to admin and site administration, I can administer uh, just the content for this site. And I've got the content here and any configuration settings for this site. And what I want to do is just walk you again through that use case of being able to easily add um, a, a biography. So what I'll do here is to start off with the first thing that we need is a structure. So I don't have any structures yet, so I'll go ahead and create a new structure. I'll go and call it biography. And what you see here is, uh, you know, and again, uh, we're still in development. A lot of the things that you see, um, we haven't completely polished and finished yet, so there are missing icons. Things aren't necessarily aligned. Uh, we recently did an a upgrade to LOUI 2.0, and we're still working through some of the issues. So uh, please understand that there may be some demo gremlins hiding in, in this demo here, but uh, hopefully uh, that will make the demo a little more exciting. Um, Okay, so uh, so I have the structure here, and, and what you're seeing here is is uh, I'm going to go ahead and define certain components. So I'll need a name, uh, I'll need a title. Uh, here's an image that I'll probably need for the picture, and uh, I'll probably need a text box for the uh, bio description. So I'll go ahead and change those labels. I'll make that a name. Uh, this will be the person's title. Um, and instead of image, I'll just call this uh, I'll just call that picture. And for the text box, 
I will label that as the bio description. Okay, so uh, by just easily really uh, dragging and dropping some fields that, are, that, that I can use, uh, easily renaming them, I, I've gone ahead and created all the elements that I need for uh, my bio page, which is just name, title, picture, and bio description. So the next thing I'll do is, based on that structure, is actually create a template. Uh, I'll call this uh, template uh, the biography template with the image on top. Uh, of course, you can have multiple templates for any structure. Um, that'll give you flexibility in changing the layout if you want. So, so this biography template will, will have the template on top. And if you're familiar with 6.1 or previous versions of LifeRay, immediately you'll see that one great enhancement we've made is we've actually included the uh, text editor directly in the edit page without having to spawn open another uh, dialog to be able to get there. Um, what we've, uh, and, and this is part of what I was talking about in, in the presentation, um, some of the improvements we made here is uh, the autocomplete. So what I can do is I can start typing in um, what I would want for a variable uh, and it gives me all the options that I can have. Uh, so maybe I wanted the bio description that I added as one of my fields and when I do dot I can do something like dot, dot get data and I can easily add that field to my template. So the autocomplete is, is, is pretty cool it and, you know gives you a hint as to what you might be looking for um, and allows you to easily add it there. Uh, the other thing that we did to make things really useful is to actually um, add the code palette on the left as well. So here are the general variables that might be of interest to you. Uh, these are commonly used. And when you hover over each of the variables, it actually gives you a description of the variable. And uh, here was a common pain that people complained about a lot is once I'm editing my template, I actually have no context of what elements I added in the structure that I can actually use here. And what we've done here is we've actually uh, added them here so that you can actually easily add them. So what happens is uh, if I wanted like the picture and I clicked on it, but actually not only add the, uh, the, the variable there, but what we've uh, gone ahead and done is we've uh, tried to add it in the most useful way as possible. So if we knew that this was a picture, instead of just giving you that very simple, we actually included, the, uh, included all the metadata so that um, it would actually display as an image. Okay. And so you can see all the, all the things that, that, that we've added here into the code palette. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assume that uh, one of our designers has gone ahead and given me sort of the styling for the for the uh, bio template. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that into my template here. So here's some styling for this bio template. And what is going to be uh, most important to me is here. Uh, the designer went ahead and and, and, and capitalized areas where I need to add my variables so that I can actually add my content. So what I can do here is where it's, it says name, I'll click on the name field and, and that will get replaced by that variable. I can do the same here with title. And uh, I'll do the same here with the actual image, the picture. And I can do the same here with the actual bio description as well. So uh, once I've had a designer actually create some sort of a stylized template for me, um, and they've highlighted the areas where I needed to pull in data, I was easily able to go ahead and click and add that data into, into my template. So I'll go ahead and click on Save. And so that, that's created my template for me there. Uh, 
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually add the web content, which the actual the web content article with the actual content for a bio. So when I go to web content and I click on add, um, there's a new uh, template type called biography. I'm going to select that. And what that does is that brings in that biography template in which I can go ahead and start adding content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically create a bio page for our founder and chief software architect, Brian Chan. Go ahead and upload a picture of Brian. And I think I'll need more room for the uh, bio description here. I'll make that a little bigger. And I think I had his bio description lying somewhere around here. Okay. So uh, I've gone ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And what you see now is I actually have uh, one web content article I've created by Brian Chan's bio page. And again, I was able to easily do that, uh, again, by creating the structure through drag and drop, uh, by creating the template uh, very easily with the autocomplete in the, in the um, code palette, and, and then just being able to easily uh, upload uh, images and add content um, to the actual article. Now, what I want to show you is how you can now easily add that content uh, to an actual page. So here's my sitemap. And what I have here is, uh, you know, I've just created an outline of, of what our website looks like. And underneath the team, we have Brian Chan's uh, bio page. And when I click on the page, we have navigation here to the left, but we don't have any uh, bio information to the right here. And so what you've had to do in the past with LifeRay is you would go to add applications, uh, then you would have to add web content display. And once you have that, you would have to select the web content. And then you would have to uh, select Brian Chan's bio page, and then it would display on the page. Okay. What we've added with 6.2 is a much easier way of adding content to a page. So now when I go to Add Content and Applications, I can toggle to Content. And what you'll see here is that you have now all the content that you can add to a page. And here's Brian Chan's bio page. Here's another article, web article. Uh, here's an image, a document. Here's a folder. And what we wanted to do was add Brian Chan's bio page. So as I hover over this, you'll see that I can see uh, basically uh, the title, who created it, the date, in a, in a brief description, if there were tags that uh, those would show as well. But now what I can do here is I can go ahead and drag and drop this content itself into the area there. And what you'll see is that the content immediately gets added to the page without having to you know, go through the trouble of, of uh, adding a display portlet and configuring. Uh, for for the web content, uh, what you saw was that that defaulted to adding into the web content display. Uh, for other things like, uh, for example, this maybe the screenshot that I want to add. What that will do here, that will actually uh, be displayed within the asset publisher. So for to what we've done is for a lot of the content that you can add directly to the page, we're just going through uh, the asset publisher. Uh, 
Uh, so just to wrap up, um, yeah, just to wrap up, I think uh, we went through, uh, we added a structure called biographies. We added a web template very easily through the palette and the autocomplete. Uh, we created the actual article with the content, and, and then we were able to easily add uh, it to the page uh, using the new um, way that you can easily add content to a page. And uh, uh, again, I'd be happy now to take any questions that people have uh, regarding any of the features you've seen or, or the roadmap slide deck uh, in general. So I had one uh, request that came in through the Q&A was uh, if there's any chance you can show the responsive aspects of the new version, uh, that'd be great. If you were to resize uh, still, your browser window, does it show that, or is that still in the works? It's still in the works, but it works to some degree. So if, if, if I start scrolling down, you'll notice that that layout will then drop underneath. Um, yep. I and you mentioned that uh, this is leveraging Twitter Bootstrap? Yes, yes, and uh, it actually even works not for uh, our control panel as well. So notice that as I uh, make things smaller, it'll 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 be responsive and adjust. Well, that's awesome because I know that in the control panel, that was one of the areas that was difficult as we worked with customers. You know, while we could make uh, you know any of the custom sites that we built on Liferay responsive, the control panel is one area where things did break down at times. So uh, that, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so our, our general goal here is to try and make everything responsive out of the box so that people can benefit from that and giving them the ability to create their own responsive uh, layouts and themes as well. Very cool, Ed. So, you know, you just went through a long list of enhancements and improvements that are coming in 6.2. You know, you've got me salivating over some of those things because I, as we work with customers, uh, you know, I see uh, them requesting some of the enhancements that are coming here and certainly, um, you know, when it comes to the platform aspect and the unbreakable life rate the, with the proprietary way of doing inter-portal communications and providing a sandbox to run applications. I think that's huge, especially you know, as, as we work with enterprise customers that have a large base of installed applications that uh, they want to surface through their portal. Um, you know, WSRP, as you mentioned, has issues that you know, don't allow it to be used in an enterprise uh, scale implementation as easily. And uh, I think you know with this uh, proprietary way of doing uh, communications between separate library portal installations, I think that's going to be huge for federated portals and uh, enterprise class implementations. Um, you know the stuff that you showed about cloud services. You know I think the possibilities with that in terms of new capabilities that you can surface there. Um, you know possibly with analytics and others. As you grow those cable bays, I think that's that's got great potential for customers and is exciting. Uh, you know, I saw you had the you had a little bit about improved personalization, where you talked about user segmenting, and uh, it almost looked like you were talking about introducing a recommendation engine to recommend content to users based on you know what they've done. Is that, did I read that correctly? Yes, that's, that's a part of the story that we're trying to um, uh, address for 6.2, uh, particularly in the use case for anonymous users. Um, I think with uh, actual named users, there are uh, many capabilities that you can put together in the portal that already exist uh, with uh, the rules engine, with auditing, with all these things that you can uh, put together to provide personalized content. Um, but uh, but in future releases, we're trying to make that much easier and bring those pieces together 
so that uh, you'll have greater analytics, uh, better ways to personalize content and deliver it to the right audience. Awesome. Awesome. Actually, I see a few questions that have come in through the chat. Um, one of the questions is that are there any changes in terms of workflow capabilities? Uh, changes in terms of workflow capabilities. Uh, we are after, I'd say, uh, we're going to try and, and uh, make some improvements to the Kaleo forms. And, and, the, and we've made some improvements to the Kaleo workflow designer as well. But we want to make that experience much more intuitive and easy to use in terms of, of the, uh, the, the usability of it. Um, in terms of new capabilities and, and features for the workflow itself, uh, no. And again, the, the scope of Kaleo Portlet was to provide users with something that they could easily use out of box without, you know, in case you can already have a workflow engine um, for their enterprise. Uh, we can integrate with other workflow engines as well. Um, but you know what we've really seen was the demand for a, a very um, simple, easy to use uh, workflow engine that that ships with it with Wi-Fi out of the box, and and that's sort of what we've targeted. Um, I'm sure in the future that we will try and um, enhance and improve some of those capabilities, but uh, we didn't get around to it for Substack. Right. You know, from my perspective, you know, as we work with customers, you know, when it comes to content approval workflow capabilities, Kaleo fits the bill just fine. You know, we've been able to do the kinds of things that customers want to do in terms of workflow from forking and joining and, you know, allowing parallel processing, um, you know, the notification capability. So, you know, I, I, you're right on. I think, you know, it fits the use case that it's built for just fine. Okay. Uh, Another question that came in is that um, are there any version capabilities with respect to templates and content objects? Uh, there's versioning for the web content articles. Uh, we do not support uh, versioning for structures or templates. Right. And versioning for content has been there for a while now. Yes. Okay. Um, I think this looks like a question that was a follow-on to the responsive request. Uh, can we control display settings for portlets, etc.? And I make a note of tables in particular. Uh, uh, you can, but you're going to have to do it, uh, uh, I believe, through the theme or through the layout. Um, one of the things that we do want to target for our next release, uh, I mean, after 6.2, is providing an online adaptive editor where, uh, you know, through a GUI, you can sort of specify the ordering in which uh, your responsive layout, uh, you know, basically happens. Okay. Okay. I think those are the questions that I see online. Um, do you want to share any more details about the cloud services and how you see that, um, you know, what you see being provided in the initial rollout and how you see it evolving or as time goes on? Sure. Uh, initially, I, I, I think what we wanted to do was to really be able to target um, some pain points that people have had with using their on-premise installation of LifeRay. And we realized that there were some um, functions that uh, we could have included into the portal, but it really didn't make sense to include it as part of the portal. Um, one example I'll give is, for example, we have uh, the, the capability to do document um, and, you know, image and, and video previews. Um, and, and, you know, we're using some technologies in the background that will do that as you upload them to provide those previews. Now, um, that it is fine and great uh, to have that features and capabilities within the portal, but is that something you want your portal server to actually be spending CPU processing time on? Uh, wouldn't you want your portal server rather to be actually serving your user requests, um, being able to do transactions that are portal related uh, versus doing things like uh, converting images? Um, 
And so we saw an opportunity there where we could provide some amount of cloud services where we would offload a lot of these activities and services that uh, really do enhance um, uh, your life rate experience, but don't necessarily need to be tied to um, uh, functions that your portal server itself has to do. So uh, based on that, you know, with this initial uh, rollout of cloud services, we're just targeting some, some very um, easy use cases that we know that will provide value to um, our customers, and that's you know, around the fixed fix pack management, code analyzing, uh, security, things that everyone is, is really concerned about. But in the future, uh, we are really looking to um, see what other added value things can we add that um, you know, really make more sense as a cloud-based service versus something that you would want um, you know, your server to crunch away at. And, and again, that would be one thing. Search would be another. Social analytics would probably fit in very well there as well. So, um, you know, we, we, we're just seeing, you know, that the cloud is another opportunity, another way that we can really be able to uh, provide some amount of, of benefit to our users. And, and we're trying to think of it um, as, uh, you know, what's the best way that we can sort of have uh, a situation eventually where, where, where it's more of a hybrid approach of, of on-premise cloud and, and being able to bring the benefits of both in, into your environment. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, another uh, item on one of your slides that caught my attention was around site management and the concept of site hierarchies. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that and, you know, what that would facilitate? You know, obviously, Library has had uh, hierarchy concepts with organizations in previous releases, but sites have been flat, and now that you're introducing site hierarchies, what will that enable? I think the greatest thing that that enables is content sharing um, between uh, related sites. Uh, and when I mean related, I mean that sites that have some sort of, 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 of uh, relationship with each other. So for example, you can have a, a, a parent site called sports and you can have a child site called basketball and football and, and you know, if you think of that as sort of an analogy. and and uh, and we, what we found was that uh, a lot of people like the idea of global scope and being able to provide uh, content in, in a global scope so that all sites could share. But one limitation was they were always saying, yes, but I don't want it to be shared with this external public site or that site. And, and, and that was one of the limitations of sort of the whole concept of global scope. Now, with site hierarchies, what you're able to do now is you're able to uh, um, be able to set up uh, two sites, a parent site, a child site, and then establish some sort of content sharing between those sites as well as membership policies. So you can say something like, okay, here's my uh, parent site, let's call it engineering, and here is my uh, child site, let's call that, uh, for example, UI. Um, now, what you could do is say that everyone that is a part of engineering automatically is a part of the UI group or, or vice versa, and all the content that is in engineering can be shared with, with that site in UI. And that's where the, the content sharing ends. It, it's not shared among any of the other sites. So um, I, I think that's the greatest use case I can think of for, for site hierarchies in terms of the benefits. It's really around um, being able to do the content sharing, uh, being able to establish some sort of, of membership policies between those sites. Uh, so that, you know, you can manage many sites very easily within my frame. So, Ed, did you just read my mind? You know, when I asked you that question, that was the exact answer I was hoping to hear. Because that's one of the requests that we, you know, you mentioned you heard it from your customers, you know, certainly as we work with customers helping them with their library implementations, you know, this has come up that, you know, you do want to share content between sites, but not globally and uh, you know this concept of site hierarchy I was hoping would facilitate that content sharing. Excellent, excellent. Okay, hey Ray, uh, do we have any more time for questions or? Uh... Yeah, we do, we have, we have just a couple more minutes. Um, if, uh, I, I haven't seen any more questions come in, but we can, um, we can also provide some wrap-up information for people um, if they want to contact us for support on LifeRay or 
if they have questions uh, where to direct those, but uh, um, we, have, we do have just a couple more minutes here. Okay. So, Ed, do you have any closing thoughts that you want to share with the audience? Uh, you know, just again, like, uh, we are very community driven, we are very uh, customer driven, and, and we want to make LifeRay really about solving what your user problems are. And so if you have any feedback, any suggestions, um, I, I think I shared uh, the slide with you at the very end where a, a place where you can either submit new feature ideas, you can contribute to our community uh, on liferay.com. And, um, you know, we definitely want uh, your voice to be heard if you're part of the Liferay ecosystem. And, and there are many ways you can do that. Um, and, but in particular, uh, we just launched that new features ideas uh, site and we're really excited about uh, all the ideation and the um, collaboration and the, and the uh, ideas that are going to be coming through that site. So I would encourage everyone to, to um, if you have a great idea for life, right, go in and post it on the site and, and go check out other people's ideas and, and vote, vote on them as well. Great. Actually, while you were putting in your closing thoughts, a uh, question just came in, which I think is relevant for the audience, which is, uh, do you have any kind of timeline for when um, a 6.2 alpha or beta version might be available? Uh, I can follow up with our engineering and, and get back to you on that. Um, I'm actually not sure at this point. Okay. All right. Well, Ed, thank you very much for making the time to share insights about the upcoming 6.2 release with the community. I know that we at Xtavir are very excited about what Liferay brings to our customers today and, you know, even more excited about what the future holds for us. So thank you for sharing that insight with uh, the audience. Um, if anybody has for the questions about this, you know, you can certainly reach out to us and we can facilitate uh, getting some answers to you. And, uh, you know, if you have needs around your life re-implementations, uh, you know, Xavier, as Ray mentioned, is the 2012 North America Life Ray Partner of the Year. We would love to help. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ray to wrap up. Sure, and, and uh, I just to help uh, along those lines, I have put up a, a closing screen here on how to contact Xtivia. Just a reminder, we, in addition to our LifeRay and portal development uh, services, we uh, deal with data management, uh, business intelligence, and data warehousing. Um, if you'd like to contact us, uh, at email at info at Xtivia.com, our phone number 888-685-3101 and extension 2. Uh, you can also go to our website, extivia.com, and there's a variety of forms there. If there's something specific you need, there may be a form that matches your specific needs. And uh, um, Ed, we're, we're thrilled to have had you here today. Thank you for your time. Um, we're, we're very excited about the partnership in the future. And to our guests, thank you for taking an hour out of your day. We uh, will wrap up this recording and start processing it and notify you within the next few days that the uh, recording is available online at our website. And uh, with that, uh, we conclude the, the webinar, and, and thank you for attending.